What were the most valuable college football programs in 2023, according to the Nielsen ratings? Welcome to episode 345 of College Football's Peek Around the Corner with your host, Greg Flugar. We cover everything in college football because we love everything in college football. And if you do as well, please subscribe to our ever-growing channel. Smash the like button if you like our content. Share the video with your family and friends. Let's not waste any more time. When we talk about the value, the valuable programs of college football, it's based upon how many eyeballs are watching the program, watching the product. That's how the money works in college football. And of course, you can't just take one year of TV ratings to show which teams, which programs are the most valuable college football programs in the country. But it's, it gives you a sense of where things are today in 2023 heading off to 2024 let's not waste any more time we're going to be going through brett mcmurphy's action network article put down your comments and thoughts in the comments section below of the video we'll provide a link in the description you can read the whole article which college football programs is the most valuable breaking down the nielsen ratings what is the most important rankings or rating in college football today Forget about the football, college football playoff selection committee rankings. Those are so predictable. <laughs> they always just pick the undefeated teams. Wait, what? Never mind. The Nielsen ratings are the most intriguing college football rankings. They provide a glimpse into which programs attract the most eyeballs, advertising revenue, and which schools might have, might have the most value to the conferences looking to expand. So... Who was the most watched, most valued, most popular team in 2023? Before we get into that, the not so fine print, not every network is rated by Nielsen. We talked about it in a live show, I, I believe last week here at Peek Around the Corner. We went into it. Some of these networks are not, are not rated by Nielsen. Some of them are. So you have to sort of adjust it in your mind. Those that are rated ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPNU, that's obvious. The Big Ten Network is has Nielsen ratings for the last couple of years. And the CW, the, net, the networks not Nielsen rated are the ACC Network, the Pac-12 Network, the SEC Network, the CBS Sports Network, ESPN Plus, and Peacock. So the Big Ten... TV ratings, the Nielsen ratings, they are dragged downward just a little bit because their conference network, the Big Ten network, is rated, has a Nielsen rating to the games. The SEC network, Pac-12 network, ACC network, and the ESPN Plus that puts on one SEC game for each school and, of course, the Big 12 schools have games at ESPN Plus. Those games are not put into their school's averages, their program's averages. So uh, when you get a look at the overall average Nielsen rating for each team in each program, the Big Ten schools, if, if it was apples to apples comparison, you would have to, in your mind, bump up the ratings of each Big Ten school uh, a little bit, at least. Okay, going forward here. Why does that matter? It means that the Nielsen ratings for the ACC Pac-12 SEC schools will be higher than the other leagues since their lower, lower profile games on their own networks are not included. That's what we just stated. And won't bring down their per game averages. So for, for any not so compelling bad matchups, they were regulated to the ACC Pac-12 of the SEC networks. Also the ESP, ESPN Plus games. Those games were not penalized for the low view and numbers compared to the Big Ten schools since the Big Ten Network is Nielsen rated. In other words, when there's a small audience watching Vanderbilt versus fill in the blank on the SEC Network, that doesn't bring down the SEC schools per game averages since those low numbers are not Nielsen rated. Hopefully that's clear to everybody. So now we know this is not an exact science and all leagues are not monitored equally. Here we go. America's TV team in 2023 was the Alabama Crimson Tide. Alabama had 11 of its 13 games on Nielsen-rated networks 
and averaged 7.12 million viewers per game. Ohio State was number two, averaged 6.05 million viewers, followed by Colorado, Deion Sanders, 6 million viewers. Among the 16th most watched teams, the 4-8 and eight Buffaloes were the only one that finished with the losing ring, losing record. Hang the banner, Buffaloes. For all the conspiracy folks out there, and I know you're out there based on my Twitter feed, thanks for following, by the way. Three of the four teams that made the playoffs were among the hot eight most popular Nielsen-rated teams this year. Number one, Alabama. Number five, Michigan. Number eight, Texas. Undefeated Pac-12, Washington, was number 11. Before we list the top Nielsen-rated teams, a shout-out to Sports and Media Watch, which posts the Nielsen ratings each week. Here are the top 32 most watched teams, based on a minimum of five Nielsen-rated games. All 32 teams average more than 2 million viewers per, per game. So <clears throat> to qualify on the top 32, you have to have five, at least five Nielsen rated games. But all your Nielsen rated games are going to be in the average. So again, the Big Ten schools on the top 32 and every Big Ten schools, their averages are going to be lower, listed lower here than than if you were doing an apples and apples comparison to the other conferences, SEC, Big 12, ACC, Pac-12. Average viewers by millions, you see the top 10, Alabama, Ohio State, Colorado, Georgia, Michigan, Tennessee, Oregon, Texas, Florida State at number nine, Notre Dame fighting and Irish at number 10. Washington, 11, LSU, USC, Penn State, Auburn, Missouri, Florida, Ole Miss, Clemson, Texas A&M. You're seeing a lot of SEC teams in there. You're seeing a Pac-12, Washington, who's going to be a Big Ten school next year. You see a Big Ten school, Penn State, and you see Clemson, right, at number 19. Iowa, Miami, Duke, Nebraska, Utah, Oklahoma, Navy, Oregon State, and there's Louisville. There is the third highest rated ACC school when it comes to Nielsen ratings. Washington State, Kentucky, and Mississippi State. That uh, That is your top 32. Some random rumblings from here from Brett McMurphy Action Network. Just win, baby. Only seven of the top 32 viewed teams by the Nielsen ratings finished with a losing record. Number three, Colorado. Number 17, Florida. Number 20, Texas A&M. Number 24, Nebraska. Number 27, Navy. Number 30, Washington State. And number 32, Mississippi State. Poor, poor Hawaii. The Rainbow Warriors played 13 games this season, but no one saw them outside of the stadium, at least based on the Nielsen ratings. None of their games, none of their games were rated by Nielsen during the season. They're on networks that are not rated by Nielsen. The SEC network, it just means more appearances for Vanderbilt. Without the SEC network, you've probably never seen a Vanderbilt game. In the past two years, the Commodores have played exactly one out of 24 games on a Nielsen-rated network. That was this year's CBS games against number one Georgia, which averaged 2.46 million viewers. I'm telling you, man, Vanderbilt does not, they are the, they get the least amount of exposure by far when it comes to the Big Ten and the SEC teams. By far, the Commodores get the least Least exposure. None of the Vanderbilt's games this season were regulated to the SEC network. Nine of the Vanderbilt games this season were regulated to the SEC network. The Commodores should be the SEC network's poster boy alongside Peter Burns, of course. Love you, Peter. Army beats Navy again. Army had only three games on the Nielsen rating networks, but Edge, Navy, and average viewers, 2.73 million to 2.61 million. But Navy did finish 27th nationally because they had bookend games with Notre Dame and Army. In other words, Navy did have five, at least five, Nielsen-rated games. Ram tough. Colorado State had the best pre-game, per-game Nielsen average for the group of five teams at 4.8 million. But that was only for two games. The biggie, of course, for the Rams was a big game against the Buffaloes and Deion Sanders. The most watched group of five teams, the minimum of five Nielsen-rated games, Navy, 2.61 2 million. 
USF 927,000. That included a 4.84 million game against Alabama. Tulane is number three. They had a 1.72 million game versus Memphis. That was a big one. Boise State comes in fourth, 590,000. They had a big one against Washington Huskies at 1.97 million. Memphis comes in at number five. And Rice, number six, as they had a big Nielsen rated game against Texas. The ACC, Florida State, number one. Clemson, number two. Miami, number three. Duke, of course, they had big games against Clemson and Notre Dame on Nielsen rated games. Riley Leonard and Louisville closes it out at the top five. <clears throat> at number five, 2.37. The Big 12, Texas was the big one, 4.26. Oklahoma, 2.61, and then it drops down to Oklahoma State and TCU. In the Big Ten, as you can imagine, the Buckeyes, number one, Michigan, number two, Penn State, number three, Iowa, number four, and Nebraska rounds it out at number five. Of course, those, those ratings are not an apple-on-apple -apple comparison to the Big 12 and the ACC. You probably want to clip each one of those Big Ten schools at least a half a million each in their averages, if not more. And the Pac-12, of course, Colorado led the Pac. Oregon and Washington and USC, two, three, four. And there's, there's Utah again, right? Utah, for the last three or four years, pretty good Nielsen rating averages. Pretty good Nielsen rating averages on the SEC. Alabama, one. Georgia, two. Tennessee, LSU, Auburn, Missouri, Missouri's getting some eyeballs on that program, and I think they're going to get a whole lot of eyeballs on the program for next year because they're going to be big time next year as well. So those are the Nielsen ratings. And, of course, they give a glimpse, just a glimpse, especially if you're just taking one year, right, one-year numbers. They give you a glimpse of the value of that particular college football program. And you saw Florida State's numbers, right, number one. Number one, Clemson, number two, very valuable when it comes to, well, expansion of the Big Ten and the SEC. And of course, you know, you've got other schools in there that have a surprisingly good numbers, like Utah always has good numbers. They're going to be a big time get for the Big 12 next year. Eyeballs are going to be on the Utah Youth Games, Cameron Rising. Can Colorado keep this up? Can they keep the number of viewers up on the Deion Sanders events? Well, they're going to have to win. They're going to have to be more than four and eight next year for the eyeballs to continue on Colorado. So those are the Nielsen ratings. Put down your comments and thoughts in the comment section below the video. It's pretty interesting. You can see the trend lines of the last five years. What programs are the most valuable? what are not quite as valuable in Florida State, once again, at the top of the ACC, and they have been at the top of the ACC when it comes to Nielsen ratings, even when they went into this 10-year decline in their football program when it comes to wins and losses. But the value has always been there for Florida State. Same thing with the Clemson Tigers. Just, just giving you a little bit of a hint. Hint, hint. Wink, wink. Until next time, from all of us at PATC, to all of you, please, please, you all take great care of each other. Thank you so very much.